Now that we have learned about all different kind of biasing techniques and biasing circuits, let's actually try to summarize everything into some sort of a procedure, step-by-step -step procedure for designing biasing circuits. So let's say that we are designing this biasing circuits for an amplifier. And uh, for an amplifier, generally, uh, we said that everything related to the amplifier, most importantly the gain, depends on the small signal parameters. So somehow assume that we know GM and RPI that we want. We know that we want a certain GM, we know that we want an RPI, a certain RPI, and these things are really coming from the amplifier specifications that we're gonna learn in the next weeks, right? But let's say that for a certain GM and RPI, you want to design the biasing circuit. So you want to basically, if this was the exponential plot again, so this is VBE, and this is IC, and this is the exponential plot. Let's say that from the amplifier, you know how much GM, from, for example, the gain of the amplifier, you know how much GM you want, you know that the slope is a certain value, so you, re you realize that you want to be at this point in the plot. So you know what VBE, VBE and you know what, what IC you want to have, right? And then we want to start designing the bias circuit that gives us that VBE and that IC. Okay, so first thing first, we know that GM is equal to IC over VT. So we're going to choose an IC that gives us the GM that we want. And our pi is just basically beta over GM. So once we set the IC and we have GM, we have our pi. Okay, now the next thing is we want to consider, considering the variations in R1 and R2 and VBE, we're going to choose a value for VRE. I, as, I, as you remember from last slide, we said that the value of VR, the bigger this is, the less sensitive you're going to be to the variations in the resistor values or which will result in variations in the base emitter voltage. Okay, so generally we want the VRE in the order of 100 millivolts, 200 millivolts to be safe, uh, whatever we can actually afford. Okay, now the next thing is with the VRE chosen, we're going to, uh, and then VBE calculated, we're going to go and find, because we can calculate VBE from the exponential, right? Remember VBE was VT times ln of IC over IS. And I have IC from GM, and I have VT and IS, so I have VBE. And I've chosen a certain VRE, therefore I can calculate VX, which is the voltage at the base. So the voltage at the base okay and then at the end i'm going to select r1 and r2 to provide vx okay so because i know that vx is equal to uh, r2 over r1 plus r2 times vcc right so i'm going to choose r1 and r2 values in a way that it gives me the vx that I want to have. At the same time, I have to make sure that VCC divided by R1 plus R2 is much bigger than the current of the base because, uh, well, that's how I actually make, can make sure that the base current is negligible. That's how I can make sure that my biasing is beta independent. So the R1 and R2 is actually coming, the value of R1 and R2 comes out of this system of equations. I'm going to solve an example in the next slide so that this becomes uh, very clear. Okay, so let's look at this example. It, uh, the question is telling us that design a circuit, be, design the circuit below. It's a biasing circuit with emitter degeneration uh, so that we can get a transconductance of 1 over 52 ohms. So GM is equal to 1 over 52 Siemens or 1 over 52 ohms uh, for Q1. And we're assuming that VCC is 2.5 volts, beta is 100, IS is 5 times 10 to the negative 70. Okay. And the last part of the question is asking us, what is the maximum tolerable value of RC? Okay. Meaning that how big the RC should be before going to the saturation. Okay. Uh, before getting started, uh, just reminding you that we're trying to make sure that this I1 here, the current through R1 and R2, we want it to be much bigger than IB so that we can neglect IB so that we can say that this biasing is beta independent. The other thing is that we want RC here to be small enough to avoid saturation 
but at the same time we don't want this to be too small you're going to see that you can guess why from the one of the earlier slides in this in this lecture that uh, our gain was dependent on rc so i don't want this to be too small because it's going to reduce my gain we're going to talk about this a lot more in the uh in the next few weeks and then for the re i want to make sure that this vre is much bigger than the variations that i expect in vx and vbe so because of our two variations or our one variations or any other reason my base voltage the vx might change by some uh by some value by some amount right and i know that i can kind of estimate those variations like i know that for example r2 i know that my resistors are going to change by two percent then i can actually estimate how much variations i'm expecting all i need to make sure is that the vre is bigger much bigger than those variations so if i am expecting 10 millivolts of variations in the uh in the vx then it, my vre is better be at least 100 millivolts an order of magnitude larger than that Okay, let's get started with the solution. So the first thing first, uh, I'm gonna notice that GM equal to one over 52 is equal to IC divided by VT, which is 26 millivolts. So this is really, this really means that IC is going to be half a milliamp. Okay, now from this IC, I can actually find VPE from the exponential equation to be 778 millivolts. Okay. Let's say that I expect uh, 20 millivolts of variations at my Vx. So assuming 20 millivolts variations in Vx. This is something that is given, okay? So like it comes with experience. Let's say that uh, R1 and R2 tolerance or uh, rate of variation is given to you. Uh, so this is, I kind of got this number out of thin air. So it's not really it's something that you should know or you should uh, guess or something like that. So don't get intimidated if you didn't know where this thing come from. So assuming just uh, Trust me that like this is a nice, this is a reasonable assumption. Assuming that 20 millivolts variations in Vx, if you have to make some such assumption in an exam or a test or a question, I will tell you how much variations in Vx you should be actually expecting. Okay, so don't worry too much about this number. So assuming 20 millivolts variation in Vx, then I can say that Vre. I want it to be much bigger than that, so I'm going to say Vre of 200 millivolts at least okay so 200 millivolts um ie is almost equal because beta is 100 so ie is almost equal to ic so it's equal to 0.5 milliamp therefore this means that re is going to be 200 millivolts divided by 0.5 milliamp so it's going to be 400 ohms okay now, this means that Vx, which is equal to Vbe plus Vre, just by KVL, I know that Vx minus Vbe minus Vre is equal to zero, right? So this is going to be equal to 778 millivolts plus 200 millivolts. So I'm going to have 978 millivolts okay now that i have this then i know that therefore r2 over r1 plus r2 has to be times sorry it's not this times vcc needs to be equal to 970 oops 78 millivolts and vcc being 2.5 volts i can find an r1 and r2 but then you can uh, you can appreciate that just by this equation because i have one equation two unknowns i can choose any like many different combinations of r1 and r2 to to meet this frac to do, to meet this ratio right but at the same time uh remember that i want to make sure that ib is negligible right 
To make sure of that, I want VCC divided by R1 plus R2 to be much greater than IB. What is IB? It's well, IC divided by beta, so 0 0.5 divided by 100. So 500 milliamp, sorry, 500 microamp divided by 100, so 5 microamperes. So I want VCC divided by R1 plus R2 to be much greater than 5 mic microamperes. So let's say that I want it to be 50 microamperes. Therefore, R1 plus R2 should be equal to 50 kilo ohms. This makes sure that VCC divided by R1 plus R2 is equal to uh, 50 microamperes, which is much greater than 5 microamperes. So an order of magnitude. Knowing that R1 plus R2 should be 50 kilo ohm, and knowing that 2.5 times R2 over R1 plus R2 should be 978 millivolts, I can actually find the value of R1 and R2. So from here, I can find R1 to be 30.45 kilo ohms, and R2 to be 19.55 kilo ohms. Okay, the last part is what is the value, what is the max value for RC to make sure that we're in the active region? Well, I know that VCC minus RC IC is the collector voltage and it should be uh, minus emitter voltage, which is uh, the VRE, should be greater than 0.2. Okay. 0.2 volts to be make to make sure that we are in the active region. So 2.5 minus uh, RC. What did we choose for? Our, oh, RC is the question, uh, the, the parameter of question. So RC, IC was 0.5 minus VRE. We chose VRE to be 0.2. Should be greater than 0.2. So. Um, here it was 0.2, right? Uh, we chose VRE, yes, 0.2. Okay, so 2.5 minus half RC should be greater than 0.4. So 2.1 should be greater than 0.5 RC. Therefore, RC should be smaller than 4.2 kilo ohms. Okay, because this is. Uh, 0.5 milliamps, so RC should be in kilo. And so the maximum value for RC is going to be 4.2 kilo ohms. So again, just to review what we did, we started with GM. The GM gave us the collector current. From collector current, using the exponential equation, I got VBE. Once I had VBE, I chose a value for VRE to make sure that it is big enough to kind of damp all different or absorb all kind of variations at the VX, okay? And the variations at the VX was something that I told you that is gonna be given to you. So just go with the VRE that is 10 times bigger than that. Once I had that, then I had the voltage across the emitter resistor and I know the voltage across the base emitter junction. Therefore, I had the voltage across or the voltage at the node X. The voltage at X was 978 millivolts. And then I knew that this voltage should be actually generated by the ratio of R2 and R1. So I said R2 over R1 plus R2 should be times VCC should be this value. At the same time, I, wanna make, I wanted to make sure that this IB is negligible. I found the IB value from, well, I knew that IC is half a milliamp, so IB should be five microamp. So if I want the 5 microamp to be much smaller, meaning that at least an order of magnitude smaller than the current flowing through R1 and R2, I chose R1 plus R2 to be 50 kilo. And then from there, I found the value of R1 and R2. Okay. The last thing was checking the transistor being in the active region, which is nothing new. We have done this um, several times up to now.